everyone. I hope everyone's having a wonderful, blessed day today. Looking forward to getting into this amazing Monday morning live uh, with you guys. I uh, am excited to be with you guys today. And if you get on board, let me know. Uh, let me know. <laughs> let me know where you're from and uh, give me a shout and say hello. Hope everyone's doing great today. Looking forward to continuing our book of the month for April. I'm really excited about that. It's going to be good. Give folks, it's going to be really good. I'm excited. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it if you want to. Uh, I know God is really doing some great things with each one of you, and I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing what that's going to look like for you guys one day. So as you guys know, okay, we are continuing this month with the book of the month, all right? Uh yeah, of course, I think somebody said on here that they didn't have a volume. Yeah, it might be on your end because there actually is volume on my end. Um, but uh, the book of the month for April, which is Reconciling Parents and Children. And I'm looking forward to getting into that today. I really am because this has been a really good book. And good news for those of you who are not on the book of the month program, all right? And that is that it is officially live as of today. So uh, you can go and purchase the book uh, right now. Those of you on the program, you understand you get it the first of the month. Those of you not on the program know that um, know that you know you'll get it in about two or three weeks, probably three weeks after uh, the first. But good news is it's available right now. So you can click on in Instagram. You can click on the quickie link, as I call it, the link tree. And uh, the moment you click on it, it'll be the first one you see right there to purchase the book uh, and the workbook. Oh, I forgot the workbook. I'm so sorry. Just imagine it goes with the workbook. Here, here's the workbook, okay? It goes the book and a workbook, all right? So you can purchase those two together on the website as a combo. Uh, don't forget that. And uh, those of you on uh, Facebook, you can do the same thing. You can click on uh, shop, the store uh, shop, and go to the website. And it'll be on, it should be on the homepage for the combo of this Reconciled Parents and Children. All right, so today we're going to have a little fun with this, all right? And uh, and once again, remember, it's a book and the workbook, all right? So don't forget that. So uh, today's going to be good because I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, your kids' dreams. Now, let me say this to you guys when I'm, we talk about dreams. One of the chapter in, chapters in, in this book for Reconciling Parents and Children is a chapter that I'm really proud of because I wrote on there about discerning dreamers, okay? Discerning dreamers. Now, um, when we talk about discerning dreamers, one of the main things that we don't think about, okay, is basically remembering that our kids have visions and dreams too. Now, when I say that, let me say this. A lot of times people will say, you know, well, my kid doesn't, you know, move in the spirit, move against the spirit. I'm not talking about that, all right? Because, I mean, I am, but I'm not. And what I mean by that is this, you know, we all dream, right? I mean, you know, uh, people in India and people in China, people in Africa, people in Mexico and people in America, we all have that commonality of everybody dreams. Everybody, and, and sometimes during the day we daydream, right? So dreaming is actually part of God's systematic way within humanity, our DNA, to be able to release our mind at nighttime, which actually is healthy for us to dream. And even though you think you don't dream, you actually do dream at nighttime, right? So before I get too deep into that, you know, just remember that it's it's good for the for the mind and the brain. So with that said, we have to begin to remember that when we deal with reconciling uh, parents and children, we're, we have to remember that our children are like us in the sense of um, still dreaming. Right? In other words, still feel sadness, still feel happiness. He still has the opportunity to pray. So has the opportunity, I say opportunity, meaning that maybe your kids might not be into that. But you know what? Let's just put it that way. It's open to everyone because we all uh, have that sort of open door because it rains upon the just and the unjust. So everybody dreams, right? Buddhists dream, all right? Hindus, atheists dream, Satanists dream, for goodness sake. I mean, dream dreaming at nighttime is just part of humanity, right? So the point I'm making that is this, because God's put it in uh, our DNA to dream, right? For many different reasons. But I said that to say this, that when we deal with a dream at nighttime and we're dealing with daydreaming, uh, what would you like to be in the future? We have to remember that our brains will, will connect to that. Our brains will connect to that dreaming aspect, right? So if you want to be a singer and you and your kid's like, man, I want to sing, I want to sing, I want to sing, you know, nine times out of ten, they're going to have a dream at nighttime where they will 
find themselves singing maybe like, I don't know, Rihanna, I don't know, you know, on the stage. I mean, you know, or maybe fe feeling like they're signing autographs. I'm using this just sort of because it's a big general, you know, uh, uh, thing with, you know, kids. We want to be superstars, want to be the best, the singers, the actors, the famous football players, you know. And so as kids are going to want to dream big, right? So with that said, whatever it is you're daydreaming about, your mind will pick that up at nighttime and you'll dream it as well. So. With that said, I wrote a chapter in here about uh, that power of dreamers because it's important for you to recognize the power of your kids' daydreams and your kids' dreams at nighttime. Now, we won't get into maybe what's of God, what's not of God right now because really, really all of it's God in the sense of realize that God created us to dream, right? God created us to even daydream at times because, you know, we we need our minds to take a, a break. We need our minds to hit the refresh button. We need our minds to be able to, every once in a while, just, just get off of work. What is it when people are stressed at work? What do we say? Take a deep breath, step away for a while, walk around for a little bit before you go back to it because it calms the nerves, right? So when you think about daydreaming and dreaming at nighttime and whatever you focus on expands mentality, you have to think about the fact, do you know your kid well enough to know what they're daydreaming about? Do you know your kid well enough to know what they're dreaming about at nighttime, right? And what that means is when you begin to dive into your kid's, we'll say daydreams and whatever it is they're dreaming about inside of them of what they want to be and accomplish one day you know, in life, here's what I tell people is this, is... From a psychological point of view, you want to be able to feed into that. Let me tell you why. Because even from a biblical point of view, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. Even from a biblical point of view, when people say, you know, um, you know, when they, when they quote the famous scripture, which I'm, uh, I like to sort of correct on a little bit, uh, give my two cents in, you know, when it says, train up a child in the way they should go. When they get older, they will not depart from it. I want you to think about that, that verse because we're going to dive into that when we deal with dreams. Because it says, train up a child in the way they should go, which means, number one, parents, you should have discernment enough to not, you know, to not put into your children what you want them to do, right? But what they want to do, whether you like it or not, God never asks you for your permission of what you, that you should like what your kid wants to do, right? So I always say it this way, right? Dad, you might not be fans of your, of your boys, you know, dancing and, and wanting to dance on Broadway. Guess what? I got new, good news for you. That's none of your business. Moms, you know, your daughters might want to play basketball and not be a cheerleader. Guess what? That's none of your business. I'm being honest. And I'm saying that from the standpoint of realizing that God just wanted you to train them up in the way they need to go, not the way you want them to go. Now, I said that. Now we're going to move into that place of dreams because it's very important that you begin to understand prophetically what it is your child is looking for and what are the attributes, what are the traits that you see them playing out as characters every day of their lives. So with that said, when I wrote a chapter in my book on dreams, uh, as far as the dreamers, you got to begin to remember that if you try to direct the sales of your child to say, no, you're going to do this. Now, do we direct the sales of our child to study? Yes. To hopefully seek God? Yes. To go to church? Yes. Right? We don't ask them for of their opinion. Hey, do you want to go to church today? You know, or, you know, oh, you don't? No biggie. Right? We don't do that. Right? We, we train up a child in the way that the foundation should be laid as Christians, you know, and, and play that out to them and lay that foundation for them. But when it deals with their future, as far as careers, success, uh, daydreaming, that's something prophetically that God is saying, eh, okay, this is where I draw the line. That's none of your business. It's their business. That's why I said my word to train up a child in the way they need to go, not the way you want them to go. So with that said, you ask them. A child, now, now, now let me ask you this too. Maybe I need to clarify. When I say a child, let me say this. I'm not talking about a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old, year old. I'm talking about a, a person who is in their, you know, teens, uh, late teens, uh, uh, even maybe 14 or 15. I mean, it could be a little early teens. Uh, now, you can get your feet wet in it when it deals with, ch you know, children, not three or four, of course. But let's say, for example, if they happen to be nine or ten on a mature level, maybe to be a little bit more consciously aware of their life, you can help help that at that moment and to feed into that realm of asking them that place of, hey, you know, you want to play hide and seek? You know, what kind of superhero do, would you like to be? You know, hey, you know, uh, when we play games, you know, who do you imagine yourself being? And then feed off of that because there could possibly be, 
possibly be a connection to their future when it deals with the traits they see within their superhero, right? Now, we don't say, oh, you want to be Superman? You want to learn how to fly? Well, let's go on the, the building tomorrow and I'll push you off the building and let's see if you can fly. No. It's understanding of saying, okay, maybe if, if, a, if a, a, you know, a girl or even a guy, you know, happens to be like, man, I love Wonder Woman. It could be a powerful, a powerful trait within that woman, within Wonder Woman, to be able to say maybe she is has the traits that she likes about Wonder Woman to be a strong leader. Maybe because she's author, you know, she's authoritative, or maybe because you know um, she does certain things. Maybe she has a lasso of truth, right? I mean, I'm being very serious. They have to think psychologically. Maybe it's a lasso of truth. Ask them, you know, what is about the superhero you like? You know, well, I like when she you know, does a lasso, you know, makes people tell the truth, right? For those of you who do not know superheroes, shame on you, especially in America. So, uh, but anyway, but, uh, and so you think about the fact of maybe it's because of that truth that they are looking for within their own life. Maybe they, because they want to be a leader to make a difference, to birth forth truth in, in, in within their world. You have to think from a point, uh, folks, from a, from a, um, a psychological point of view and also from a prophetic point of view, because we're all sort of prophetic, right? Which all could prophesy, right? And so you have to think from a standpoint of that being just an example. You have to think of under other things in your life uh, uh, of your kid, uh, and that is, I won't say a child. I should say more of a kid or adult or teenager, because you have to think from the standpoint of what are the traits that they like. You know, oh, I like strong, tough, rough people, right? Okay, well, let's cater to that. Maybe there's a maybe there's a prophetic anointing upon you. Maybe maybe outside of just everything being just spiritual, maybe there is a trait there of of, let's say, uh, uh, you know, in construction. Maybe, in other, in other words, there might be a trait there that actually is alluding towards the toughness, the roughness, the lasso of truth, right? The flying for Superman could represent escaping, you know, uh, or maybe, uh, believe it or not, this is from a psychological point of view, escaping certain things. Flying high above problems. In other words, maybe prophetically they see things from a higher point of view. You will never really understand or realize, and I'm being very serious, you'll never realize that when people, you know, like a, a, a teenager could say, man, I love that act, you know, that actor. I love that actress. I love these kind of movies. Why do you like this kind of, kind of movies? Why do you like this certain actor? What is it, the betrayal of this, uh, you know, they're portraying this actor and actress that you find fascinating? What is attracting you and drawing you into that world? And so here, the key thing is you have to think from a standpoint of, um, from a psychological point of view, that everything is prophetic to a kid. They don't know they're prophetic. They're not going to say, oh, the Lord showed me this, you know. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, if they did, I'd be like, whoa, where'd you get that from, you know. But you have to think from a, from a, uh, you know, an early, early teenage, you know, uh, uh, kid from realizing what are the traits of what they like or who they like, why, and then feed into that. Because prophetically, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Those rivers of living water are trying to flow forth. But are you listening to the way your child needs to go? Hello? Are you listening to the traits that's in that child as a river trying to flow out of their belly? Are you listening to that? Or are you trying to, because of your low self-esteem, trying to live your life through your kid, right? And that's why we have a bunch of kids growing up messed up because they get off track, offline. Why would anything work for me? Because guess what? Because your parents led you the wrong way and thought they did what was right, but instead actually led you down a, down a wrong path. And it threw you off majorly, right? That's the case with so many people today, so many people today, right? And so that's where that's where you have to begin to realize that it's the it's the nurturing of the dreams, it's the nurturing of the daydreams, it's the nurturing of the attributes of who they like, actor, actresses, movies, traits, and what they're drawn to, music, music. Uh, you know, there's you no. Know, I'm not going to say, you know, hey, my kid listens to Cardi B and and she talks about all the f words, you know, and all the four letter words, you know. Where's the, you know, and I'm not going to say that's prophetic, all right, at all. But so that's a good laugh for you. And many of you are like, who's Cardi B? You probably don't want to know if you don't know her. But anyway, so uh, my point being with that is, you 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 need to realize that. Even the style, the genre of even rap music can actually portray a prophetic sign because you have to think of the roots of rap music, how it started. 
you know, out of R&B, how it started in the 80s. You know, what was the jest of it? It was it was wanting to be able to bring forth a strong message, you know, of liberate or whatever the case would be. You know, what is the message within, let's say, you know, maybe why he had listens to, let's say, harder rock music or maybe pop music or, uh, you know, or, or, a certain, or maybe they like certain uh, artists because of what they do. Maybe they support children. Maybe they support, you know, this, this group of people. You know, you have to think, what is it? There's an attraction there, and I'm not talking about a, I'm not talking about a physical a sexual attraction. What is the attraction there of why a child, a kid, a teenager is attracted and drawn to certain things? I mean, think about it. In a in a in a uh, in an exterior uh, world, we can say, "Oh, my kid, you know, loves uh, football. He's gonna play football, right?" And 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 you wonder why maybe they're you know liking TV and watching football. I mean, think about it. traits always come out out of things that kids love to do, and and nine times out of ten we don't pay attention to the hidden traits that are the actual most important traits because a lot of times they're speaking of their character, their personality that needs to come out of them that you need to prophetically cater into and cause that thing to come out in them to bring it to the surface to where their own, their path is made clear to them to know why their character is the way they are, why their personality is the way they are. I couldn't begin to tell you so many kids, you know, parents who said, well, you know, my kid's an introvert. My kid likes this. My kid does that. I don't understand them because you've never done, you've never respected the world enough to get into the world, possibly, possibly, not all the time, to see exactly what it, the, the kid might be closed off to you. So maybe it's not your fault, right? But you have to think all the time, you know, we can't just cut the line and say, you know, my kid does this. Well, I don't know why they won't come out of the shell. Well, have you tried to get into the brain? Have you tried to get into the world? Have you tried to get into gaming of what they like? Have you figured maybe gaming could be a prophetic sign as well? Maybe look at the characters that they're following after. Before here's what here's what I tell people. Before you look and say, oh, they're you know uh, they're gaming their games are war, you know, and and they're killing people, machine guns. Oh, turn off! I don't believe that in Jesus' name, you know. Before you do that, you might want to say, let me see why they're drawn to maybe that versus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a really old one here. Okay, you, you guys are that are my age or understand this will get this. Maybe of the case why they're not, you know, playing Donkey Kong or Pac Man. Those are some old ones for you, Jeremy. But think about, it. I mean, why, why certain things? Because maybe certain Pac Man could, Pac Man could bring a challenging factor. Uh, learning to run the race, maybe very competitiveness, right? Versus a war one. So before you automatically become all holier than thou. And write everything off, dive into your kid's brain to find their prophetic sign of what it is they're drawn to. Everything in this universe is created the same way in the sense of like attracts like. We are drawn to the very thing that we are in the core of our being. And even though that might be misdirected, it doesn't mean it can't be redirected into the right place at the right time. Because it should be. We all are sometimes uh, uh, misled. And we need to be redirected. So you have to think of that from that level. And if you just write it off because you're so holier than thou, you will miss the mark or the trait of the high call trying to be portrayed within gaming or within music or within movies or within certain things. Because creation's moaning and groaning waiting on the sons of God to arise. And if and if your teenager is trying to arise but doesn't know how to arise or what or the definition of what they're called to do or be or why they have certain traits and that's why sometimes even kids kill themselves because parents don't dive into their brain to say let's figure out exactly why you like what you like like, who you like, what you like, why you're doing what you're doing, and it might it could have stopped some suicides. It might have could have stopped kids being on, on depression medication because you've got to begin to dive into their brain to see what is like attracts like with them, why they're attracted to certain things. And don't write off everything as being demonic. Oh, my kid likes this. Well, you know what? It's redirecting them as to why they are attracted to that thing. Find out the why 
and then dive into the personality trait and then redirect them. Don't go, oh, I write that off in Jesus' name. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this because you're cutting away their personality, trying to grow and trying to manifest and trying to discover itself within them. Your, your kid is trying to desperately relate to and first of all, find a personality, their personality, their character. Their attraction, and if you automatically write everything off because you you feel as if it's wrong or bad, and you haven't jumped into the respect, trying to dive in to find a way in their river of their of their mind of their personality and their character, and then say ding ding ding. Now I get why they like certain things, and then you can redirect them to possibly other things that has that same, that would also cater to the personality or the character. If you quick to write it off, then you know what? You're writing them off, and what's going to happen is they're going to get older. They're going to say, I don't know why I'm the way I am. Why do I feel this way? Why do I act this way? Why do I talk this way? Because your mom and dad never do dove into your brain to help you define your character and your personality. And it's not always a parent's fault because we have to flip it sometimes. And that is understanding the kids need to also work with their parents to discover my, my father, my mother is trying to find me. They're trying to, to not allow me to be into a dark, dark hole of, of ignorance and a lack of knowledge when I'm trying to find myself. So I need to give my parents grace enough to try. Right and to and to and to meet them halfway. Those are key elements you've got to begin to understand, folks. If you do not, your kid will not like you growing up. Will not like God. Be depressed, not knowing who they are. How many kids nowadays? And we say, oh, this generation doesn't know who they are. You know why? Because parents and, and kids don't connect enough to say, why do you like what you like? Let me have. Let me show you respect and find out the trait. Because if you because if you don't, if you don't know, if you if you're always constantly putting down those traits within their character and them trying to discover the personality, trust me, someone else will help pull it out of them and redirect it in a bad, wrong way. And so you've got to begin to understand, if you don't do it, and you're so holy you write everything off, don't worry. Somebody else come along and say, hey, man, you know, let, let, let me show you some wrong, bad things, because I see that you, you probably would like this. Oh, now think about it. Yeah, I, do, I would like that. And they dive into that because because a like attracts like, so they find the connectedness of the attraction that their personality can feed into in now a bad, horrible, wrong way. And then we wonder why they wake up one day wondering why everything's going crazy with them, right? And then 30 years later, they're like, well, you know what? I, I didn't discover myself until I found this. I found that in, in life. Here's the, here's the interesting thing to me. And I'm going to say this in a good way, uh, and because I'm all about being a Christian. Uh, hallelujah, I'm all about being a Christian. He is my love, the love of my life, everything I've ever dreamed of possibly. He's the Savior, the Lord, the King of my world. With that said, not however, but with that said, why do Christians, kids, they get saved 20 years later, and they, all of a sudden, I found myself when I found Christ. Why would they say that then? Because parents should be the typology of the Christ nature when they're younger to find themselves. What they should do is when they get older and they find Christ is find Christ. Hello, are you with me? How come they have to find themselves when they find Christ? Now, don't get me wrong. Hear me. I've, you know, our identity is in him. But do you, do you, do you, do you, can you read between the lines of what I'm trying to say? You know why? Because no one ever perfectly taught them to find themselves and so, praise God, when they find Christ, they find more of themselves because no one taught them themselves. Guess what? Before I became a Christian, I was knowing myself. You know why? Because my parents knew how to feed into me and see what my traits were to where when I did find Christ, it was the it was the everything, but it was also the addition that I needed because I already were finding myself, my personality, my traits, and Christ just tweaked that and then and just helped expand the, my mind to go the direction that I already, um, how can I say this, that I already knew, not knowing my future, but I knew through my personality of who I was, right? Because think about it. Let me, let me put it this way. Isn't it interesting? And I'm going to say something you guys are going to be like, whoa, hold on a minute. Mind-blowing. Isn't it interesting that nowhere in the scriptures of the New Testament, Oral Testament, nowhere does it say 
Now hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Are you with me? How come nowhere in the New Testament does it say that Paul, Peter, James, Mary, John, you know, said, I, find, I found myself when I found Christ? No. They found their, their identity, right? They found who they are in Christ because the mind, they, they already told already through other scriptures to cast down vain imagination. So if I know my personality or I know, now once again, not in every case, let me just say that sometimes I've watched God take a personality and redirect it. And thank God he did. That's because their personality was mean or hateful or they didn't know what they're called to do in their life. And all of a sudden now they do, right? Because there are certain things that a parent should teach their children and discover their personality and their character as their parent. Because the parents are the priest of the home. Hello. The dad should be the priest of the home. So the priest should still be able to cater to and feed into the personality and the character of, the, of their kid to where when they get older, they won't depart from that. And that way, when they do find Christ, are you with me? That way, when they do find Christ, then they find their everything of their direction, but they don't find their personality or their character because that should have already been discovered by the priest of their home helping pull it out in them. Hello. I'm going to let you guys sit on that just for a moment. Because it doesn't say train up the child in the way they should go in the Lord. It do, uh, Come on. Hello. It doesn't say train up a child in God, get them spirit filled. I mean, come on. Those are very important. But it doesn't say train up a child in the way they should go. When they get older, they won't depart. It says train up a child in the way they should go. A priest should train the child up to to for them to discover who they are in their personality and their character. To where when they do, that was that should help lead them to the Lord to find who their identity is in Christ. To find out what God wants for them. But but if a person finds themselves in Christ, unless they've had a bad, messy past. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, and a lot of people have. Really bad. But if a person finds, finds Christ one day, becomes a Christian, and all of a sudden, everything in their DNA, their character, their personality, everything about them completely rapid changes, that shows me, mom and dad, you possibly could have maybe not been the priest and maybe failed your duties to train up a child in the way they should have gone, right? As far as their, their, who they are in knowing their boundaries of their personality, and their character. Now, I know that's a little deep there, but can you guys distinguish the difference when I'm trying to say? Because when we find Christ, we find everything. But a priest of the home should do the job to find the actual personality of their own child. Can you guys hear that okay? I, I, mean, I, I'm, I mean, if I'm not making sense, please tell me, because I mean that, all right? Because I want us to... Um, hold on a minute. I'm going to pull this up really quick. Give me a second, guys. Pull this up just to make sure Jeremy is not crazy here. All right. So in Proverbs, it says, that's right. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 20, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he gets old, he will not depart from it. It doesn't even say train him up in Jesus, in God, in Holy Spirit, in church, in synagogue. You, your job is to just train them up. Right? And if you're not training them up in who, in who they are, then... Guess what? Then when they begin to find Christ, which might be harder for them to find Christ, when they find Christ, then they not only find salvation, then they got to go back and find them because their parents never did. And so the high priest now, Jesus, has to now bring out their personality and their character because the priests of the home never were able to do that. Hello? 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 Can you, not, not, can you hear me? You see what I'm saying? In fact, let me, oh, this is good. Ah, uh, Okay. So let's read this. I'm going to read Proverbs 20, chapter 22 before I close, okay? This is what it says. A good name is rather to be chosen than riches, and a loving favor rather than silver or gold. I love that verse. Number Verse 2. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. So we're talking about money right now. Number 3. A prudent man forsakes the evil, uh, forsakes the evil 
and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Okay, now we're talking about a little bit like boundaries. Number five, thorns and snares are in the way of the of the of the the forward. He that doeth keep his soul shall be far from them. Okay, we're getting that thorns, snares, boundaries. So we're hearing a little bit of this. Like, I want you to think about this. We're hearing a, we're, what we're hearing is training up of a human being. Hey, have a good name. Choose, you know, it's okay to have money, but have a good name. And by the way, when you see evil coming, hide yourself from that evil because that's part of your character. Hey, and by the way, let me tell you the humility, verse four, humility of the fear of the Lord is our riches and honor. And also, you know, dealing with your character and your personality, you know, gets the humility to you, right? Okay. And then we get into, you know, um, and don't be, you know, and, and within your character and your, and your stay out of trouble, don't get all caught up in those thorns and snare. In other words, don't be put in the middle of something. And all of a sudden, we get on verse 6. And train up a child in the way he should go, that when he gets old, he won't depart from it. So what have I read so far from, from verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6? What I've read is building character and building personality is what I hear. Okay? That's what I'm hearing. And it just continues, 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 right? And then he goes on to verse 7. The rich ruler over the poor... Uh, Excuse me, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower, borrower is servant to the lender. Okay, now we're getting into how to handle your money. Verse 8, he that soweth uh, iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. And it keeps on and on. So what is this chapter talking about? It's talking about building character, building boundaries, building personality. Hello? I don't hear your child being in synagogue, praying the Holy Ghost. Now, we know that's important. You, you, do you get what I'm saying? What we're hearing is, hey, this is what you should be as a human being, right? But what we say is we say, train up a child, train up a child in the Lord and things of the Lord. Yes, you should. But that's not what the scripture says. So the priest of the home should train up based on this this chapter dealing with teach them to have a good name, teach them humility, teach them to stay out of people's problems, teach them how to, de- how, to, how to deal with their money, teach them about the way they should go to where that way they won't depart from it. But I got to know the way they need to go. That's right. By knowing your child as the priest of the home, knowing the personality, knowing what they like, knowing what, what you feel like attracts like, knowing what they're attracted to, to find out what's pulling them to the surface. Are you with me, guys? Come on. I mean, we, 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 all we've got to do is just read scripture and put it into a more proper aligned it, line perspective, and we can seal a bit. It's so funny because it goes on and on. The eyes of the Lord look into the, you know, the, the love is pure of the heart. The mouth of a strange woman. Foolishness is bound in the heart. Uh, he that oppressed the, oppress the poor. I mean, we're dealing with basically building character. Isn't that funny? And we just and we just make up our own thing on these things, you know. And so that's where your job is to train up your child's character, knowledge, personality, find where the traits are, and dive into their world. Find out what they're daydreaming about. That's the thing. And once you do, you can read between the lines and 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 go a route where they're going. And like, okay, I see my child. Their personality is going this direction. I need to cater to that and to make sure I'm directing them by what I'm seeing and discovering in their personality and character and, and feed into that vein. And maybe sometimes you might got to tweak it a little bit to go a little bit this way instead of this way. And that's fine. But don't, but don't cut them off and cut everything about them off and say, you shouldn't be doing none of this stuff. They're trying to discover themselves. And who their personality is and their characteristics. And you just chopped them to pieces. Are you with me? So this book is going to help out a whole lot. Before I close, buy badges on Instagram, folks. Buy um, stars on Facebook. Let me know this really ministered to you guys, please. I love this conversation. I love this today. It's been, you know, I'm, I'm, this is my, one of my favorite subjects to talk about as well. So buy badges real quick. Buy some stars and let me know you love me. Amen. Let me know this is good, good stuff. You can go right now also. Don't forget, go right now. Buy the, buy the combo. You can download the book and the workbook on uh, by the quickie link on Instagram and go to the shop button on Facebook. You can download them right now or you can buy the paperback. Either way, they're available to you right now. All right. We just made them available this morning. So go today and do that. And... Uh, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to, uh, we, we got to feed into algorithms, right? 
And so talking about personality traits on algorithms on Instagram, Facebook. So we got to feed into the algorithm. So what we're going to do is this. Once we get off, you know, I want you guys to continue to comment on Facebook and Instagram. I want you guys to like it. I want you guys to share it. And uh, good. I'm so glad you did, Rebecca. Thank you so much. I love you guys so much. And and do that for me. That way it's it'll still stay in the in the flow of the of the algorithms. Let's get this ball rolling. All right, for people to get that. To watch this. So thank you as always. Go right now and download the book and the workbook on this on the uh, website. It is available right now. All right. I love every one of you. Have a blessed, wonderful, amazing, powerful day. And I'll talk to you guys soon.